Number one asks us to write each expression in the form a to the b power without using any radicals. So in this first one, remember that a square root kind of has a little two here, and that then that goes to the bottom of the fractional exponent. So we have five to the nine halves power here. For b, um, we could probably rewrite the bottom as a fraction first, as a fractional exponent first. So remember that the exponent on the 12 is a one, and then this three is gonna go to the bottom of that. Then remember that um, we can move the number from the bottom to the top if we write it as a negative exponent. So we're going to move this 12 to the top and then make the exponent negative one third. And we don't want this a to be a fraction. So that's why we wanted to bring it to the top and then bring it to a negative one third exponent. Number two, write 32 to the negative two fifths without using exponents or radicals. So first thing um, I'm gonna do is write this as one over 32 to the positive two fifths. And then I'm gonna rewrite this using radicals just as one of the steps in between here. So this five is gonna go on the bottom, or sorry, in the root. And then this is gonna be 32 squared, but I'm actually gonna put the two outside here. Um, because I know from doing some of these a few times that 32 is actually um, 2 to the 5th power. So if I look at this, um, 2 times 2 is 4, times 2 is 8, times 2 is 16, times 2 is 32. So that means that the 5th root of 32 is equal to 2. So I'm just going to rewrite that part as 2, and then I still have to the second power. And 2 squared is 4. So this is really equal to 1 fourth. Number 3, match the equivalent expressions. So I see um, this 1 third power here with the 8. So let's look at a couple of things here. So 1 to the third power is 1 because it's 1 times 1 times 1. 2 to the third power, 2 times 2 is 4 times 2 is 8. Okay, so we know that 8 to the 1 third power is 2. Um, then we also see 16 to the 1 half. So if we look at some squared numbers here to help us, um, so 1 squared is 1, 2 squared is 4, 2 times 2, 3 squared is 9, and 4 squared is 16, which we kind of see here. So that means that 16 to the 1 half power is 4. So let's just kind of keep these two things in our back pocket as we're doing these problems to help us. So that means that 8 to the 1 third power is 2. So we see that here at number 5. So this one is number 5. Um, and then 8 to the 1 third power to the negative one third power would be the same as one over eight to the positive one third. And we know that eight to the positive one third is two. So B is one half, which is number three. Then um, eight to the negative one is one over eight to the positive one or just one eighth, which we see at number one. Then 16 to the 1 half power we talked about is 4. So that's num number 6 here, which means 16 to the negative 1 half is the reciprocal of that, or 1 fourth, which is number 2. And then finally, 16 to the 0 power, anything to the 0 power is 1, and that's number 4. Number four, complete the table using powers of 27 in the top and radicals or rational numbers in the bottom. So 27 to the first power is the same as 27. The square root of 27 is 27 to the one half power. 27 to the one third means what number times itself three times will get us to 27. So on the last screen, we looked at one third was one, or sorry, one to the third is one. 
2 to the third um, was 8. 3 to the third, so 3 times 3 is 9, times another 3 is 27. So 27 to the 1 third power is 3. And then um, 27 to what power would give us 1? Well, anything to the 0 power is 1. And then 27 to the negative 1 half power will be the reciprocal of 27 to the 1 half. So this is going to be 1 over the square root of 27. And then um, 1 third will be the reciprocal of 3. So then that will be the negative exponent of 27 to the 1 third. So this is 27 to the negative 1 third. So those are going to be reciprocals. We get reciprocals by doing um, the opposite sign exponent. Number five, what are the solutions to this equation? So we'll multiply this out. So x times x is x squared. Then we'll have x times two, which is two x. We'll have negative one times x, which is negative one x. When we combine those like terms, we get plus one x. Then we have negative one times two, which is negative two. And then we have the equals negative two. So I'll add two to both sides. So we have x squared plus one x, and then negative two plus two is zero, and negative two plus two is zero. So we end up with x squared plus one x equals zero. So we'll factor out an x. So when I factor an x out of x squared, I get x, and x out of one x, I get one. So then we'll split these and set them equal to zero. So x equals zero and x plus one equals zero. So this one's already solved. And here we'll subtract one from both sides to get x equals negative one. Number six, use exponent rules to explain why the square root of five to the third is equal to the square root of five to the third. Um, so this, whoops, so if we kind of just rewrite out this exponent rule here, square root of five three times, right? So square root of five times square root of five times square root of five. Okay, we could multiply these all together inside of a radical since these are all the same radical. So then this is going to be the square root of five times five times five, which will end up being the square root of five cubed. So then that's kind of the same thing there. You could also kind of do it this way where you've got this one is five to the third power. So then we could split this up with the radicals and then we would end up with the square root of five three times.